All right, back to this first screen. All right, what does MMSS stand for? Well, the letters MM stand for Makoto Mori, JE3HHT. Uh, He's the one who invented the, this program that's designed for decoding of uh, slow scan images. SSTV, of course, stands for Slow Scan Television, a system for transmitting pictures via radio frequencies. Earlier systems, of course, required a lot of hardware uh, that uh, it took up a lot of space, really. Uh, Gary, I think, would uh, be familiar with that because he did some of that in the early days. But today it's all been replaced with software. Um, and uh, this is probably the most used uh, software program for slow scan television. Uh, if you go to the following web page, and if you'd like to copy that down, fine, but anyone who wants a copy of this presentation, I can send it to you in email. But uh, if, you're, if you'd like to copy that uh, URL right now, that's fine, no problem. When you get there, um, look for MMSSTV113.exe and double click on it to download it to your download folder. And uh, once it's there, you go to your download folder and click on that exe uh, file. Uh, there's a lot of documentation on on, the, on that particular web page, as well as YouTube videos and all kinds of websites with, as I call it, excruciating detail. I don't know if I spelled that right or not, but uh, it's a great program and uh, it's really been adopted by many, many hams. This is the opening screen that you get. Um, when you uh, initiate or launch the EXE program. Um, and uh, the uh, next thing that would happen would be it would ask you to put your call sign into a little window. So when you do, you'll get an image that looks something like this. Uh, it, everything is blank, of course, and uh, and because you put your call sign in earlier, it would appear up here. At this point, you'll begin to set up your program with your own radio and your own computer, of course. If uh, you already are using digital programs on, um, on your system, such as uh, WSJTX, FL Digi, or Ham Radio Deluxe, you will not need any additional hardware. Now, in the event that uh, your radio doesn't have a built-in sound card uh, or USB output, you'll need an additional interface such as a signal link or a rig blaster. This is uh, what the default S so templates looks like uh, it, it comes built into the program and you can alter these to suit yourself. Um, I, I sometimes things need to be in a different position. You can drag them here and there. You can make them smaller. Uh, you can add whatever you'd like, uh, but these are some of the basic ones and you can invent your own. You can, you can uh, create your own, uh, in these blank spaces down here, if you like. Uh, this is a, an example of uh, SPIX. These are pictures that I put on my own uh, program. So if I wanted to send pictures to somebody, I could pick one of those. And then the template will go on top of it so that you get the image as well as the information that you want to share. There is an extensive list of SSTV frequencies for every handband. 
and they are located at this website. Um, really quite extensive, but the most popular frequency uh, is on 20 meters and it's 14.230 megahertz. Um, I haven't so far heard or see, seen anybody sending pictures on other frequencies, um, but I'm sure when conditions are right, people do. To set up for decoding, um, what you need to do first is clip, click on the word option. And the next thing that will come up are the words SS, set up MMSSTV, and then you select RX. Uh, on the third window, when you have selected RX, this is what you'll see. Just make sure there's a dot in, uh, in this Hilbert TF, and make sure that all four of these are selected. The rest of it is already there for you. You don't need to uh, uh, worry about them. You may want to play around with them, modify them a bit, that's okay. The next window is for uh, transmitting. Again, uh, most of this is already there. You won't have to make any modifications unless you wish. Uh, well, you will have to put your call sign in there, I think. Uh, the next window is uh, miscellaneous, and this is where you put the information uh, about your own audio source, whether it be your radio or um, a, um, an interface, and uh, th this sets you up for sending and receiving uh, images. Again, you don't have to change anything else in this particular screen. It's pretty much set up for you, but again, experiment, have some fun. Here's some examples of pictures that I've actually copied on my own system. Uh, fairly recently, uh, I copied this one from someone in Texas and uh, the same chap sent me, uh, well, sent, he, he sent it to, out on the air without actually um, indicating any, any particular recipient. Anybody can, can copy the images if they appear uh, on, on, the, uh, on the radio. Another example from somebody in Ontario, copied that one recently, and uh, somebody else down in the United States. And some years ago, when uh, the in International Space Station was transmitting images from the uh, Russian uh, cosmonauts, they were uh, honoring various stages in their space uh, program with uh, postcard size images with uh, information about the event that they uh, wanted to talk about. Um, this was another one. Oh, by the way, that last one appeared uh, when the ISS was over Moncton, so it was quite a quite a good. Quite a, I'll just back up here again. To this one. Uh, as you can see, there's just a little bit of noise in it along here. Apart from that, oh yeah, a little bit here as well. But it was a pretty pretty good pass, and uh, the signal was strong, so I got a good got a good picture from that. This one was a little noisier. We, we, the ISS obviously was a little further away and didn't, uh, didn't come out quite as well. So at this, uh, at this point, I've asked Malcolm if he would send me a picture from his location so I can show you exactly what it looks like when it's being decoded and the end result. So. Uh, Malcolm, if you want to take a minute and get organized, uh, I'll just close this and uh, I'll bring up my program and uh, we'll see if we can make this work for everyone to see. 
I'm all set whenever you are, Jerry. You're all set? Okay. I'm on frequency 7033. Okay. It looks pretty clear, so if you'd like to start sending. Now you'll notice that Scotty 2 has been selected. These are various methods of sending the same, same data. I find that Martin 2 is probably the fastest. Well, that looks great, Malcolm. I'm hoping everybody can hear what it sounds like as well. And there you go. That's great. Thank you very much, Malcolm. No trouble. Uh, now that will be recorded in something called history. And uh, just, I won't go through all this, but these are some of the some of the images I copied recently. Uh, and they all will remain. Oh, there's another one that Malcolm sent me the other day. Uh, but nice, nice job, Malcolm. Thanks very much. No trouble. Yeah, any questions? Everybody ready to uh, download and, and start copying? Okay. Well, anyone who would like a copy of that presentation, I can send it to you in the email. Over to you, Malcolm. Take it Super. away. Well, thanks for doing that, Jerry. Do I have a question, I, I guess, to uh, any other folks. Has anyone ever um, either decoded or sent messages? Show of hands, maybe. Uh, no. Gary has. Gary has, yeah. And yeah. So Taylor. Okay. And Charles, too. Charles? Okay. Yeah. yeah, there was a student that gave a transmitted slow scan TV picture for a, a seminar at for the VE9 UNB Amateur Radio Club. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. Malcolm, uh, just for a point of interest, uh, I did slow scan back in the early 90s when we built our own panels to do it with JV Fax. And uh, we had another one that a guy in New York State was building himself, and uh, we were able to acquire some. So a number bought those uh, pre made uh, circuit boards to plug into your computer. And uh, anyway, we did, uh, when we had the uh, the big event here one time in Frederick, and we had that uh, fun weekend and swap shop and everything back in the 90s. We, I did a presentation on slow scan and we had uh, it set up at the forestry complex and we had uh, a big screen up there and uh, we sent pictures from my place here up there so they could see what was coming through. So it was on a, like an old screen from a, the old movie screen we had up and we had a a way to focus it on that so it's been around for a while and previous to when I got into it others had as Jerry said had bought these uh, units that were enormous big and you need the big camera and all that stuff so when we started to do it in the early 90s the uh, it started to get into boards and things and so it's advanced now, of course, to be in a program in your computer. So it's uh, it's been around for a while, but it's progressed along through the years. So that's all I've got, I guess. Super, thanks. I, I know when uh, Jerry had mentioned that I <clears throat> I downloaded it to, to give it a try and um, 
I think I, uh, of course, like everything, uh, there's some YouTube videos uh, on it as well as far as setting it up. So it's fair, it was fairly, um, fairly easy to set up and stuff. And it's interesting to see what you can actually decode. So there are, uh, there are people still sending it. So yeah, I've uh, decoded, I think it was Minnesota areas, very, very clear image uh, as well. So um, anyway, so yeah, thanks. Thanks for that uh, as well, Gary. Any other comments for so, so slow scan TV? It's easy for me to say. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll just move on to some club business. So um, 